He's a man of many talents. He's known for his work both on the small and the big screen. And joining me on the couch today, director, producer, Mfundi Wundla. Welcome to the show. Mfundi, you are known as the man behind what's now known as the longest standing soap in South Africa. Of course, we're talking about generations. And what's so interesting is that it was launched in 1994 on the back of obviously the democracy in, in South Africa, in the country. Of course, there must have been quite a few challenges. Um, could you share with us the story of what the challenges were at that point in time? Uh. Yeah, there were, there were a number of uh, challenges. Um, uh, s some of the challenges, one of the challenges were, uh, was uh, my own uh, misconception of the television landscape of South Africa. You see, I, uh, my mentor in, in California, David Milch, is a cop drama uh, 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 creator, and NYPD Blue, Hill Street Blues, and I came to South Africa with the idea of doing tough dramas, like right. cop dramas. I, I had- Because you were school, that was yeah, basically that, your that, school. That, that was my school, yeah. that was my school, professional schooling. And uh, uh, cop dramas, thrillers, you know, like more like a serious dramatic right, right. narrative. Yeah. So that's the one I, I the, my, my, my training. And then uh, I wanted to do, for instance, a, um, a uh, series on the Brixton murder and robbery squad which is, you know, which existed. So I wanted to do something like that. And, uh, and then, of course, upon my return, yeah, I found out that those are two expensive dramas uh, for the South African, uh, for South African broadcasters. And uh, they were more interested in me uh, uh, doing a soap opera. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I had no clue how to write a soap opera. And uh, what I did, I didn't tell them that, so no, of course not. No, no. But of course <laughs> when, you, when you when you get in, you know, you don't say no. I don't know. I'm a this. You, you take the opportunity. You go, of course I can. Yeah. So you say, of course I can. I said yes, I can. And then what I did was I I uh, I uh, I uh, called my wife in, who was in Los Angeles, and I yeah. asked her to go to uh, bookstores in Los Angeles and get me three books on the writing of soap operas, and she must Federal Express them to me, and she did. And uh, I basically spent uh, two weeks uh, uh, reading those books cover to cover, watching a lot of soaps, both domestic and foreign, uh, to get an understanding on the structure of soaps, how they are, you know, how they shape the characters, how the narrative evolves, and that sort of thing. And then at that time, so I was ready, you know, because I was a writer anyway, so I just had to understand. Another the dynamic yes, of another, putting a another, soap another, together. Another, yes, right, yes, yes, right. yes. And then I and then I went and I pitched, I pitched uh, 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 for generations. Uh, I was up against two other people, and uh, and uh, and they accepted my my pitch. And at that time, I, I decided to set generations in the advertising world because my brother and his friends, who had worked for major advertising agencies like. Ogilvy and Mother, or Grays, and That's all right, of those, yeah. uh, decided to establish their first black ad agency in South Africa called Head Boys. Yes. So I used to hang out with them and listen to their pitches and how they conceptualize uh, 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 narratives of, for advertising. And I, I got quite excited about this. I said, uh huh, I'll set my soap in the advertising. Makes world. for a good story to mm -hmm. start with. Yeah. So, Mfundi, 17 years later, it's still one of the highest rating soaps across all channels. Yes. Indeed. What is the success behind the longevity of, of generations? Well, uh, you know, like, I, well, one can only speculate. I mean, uh, there's certain things which I know, uh, well, there's luck. One can, luck at some point must kick yeah, in. Some element of luck. Some element of luck must kick in, and uh, and um, and the team around you. Yeah. Like I've got two good producers, mm -hmm. uh, and then I have a uh, writing department, uh, good writers, and I've got good actors, and uh, and somehow we gel together. That's one thing. And the, our soaps, the 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 structure of our narrative is that we resolve conflicts pretty fast. Mm. So th there are certain soaps, for instance, you could walk away from a soap uh, in January and you 
gets back in May and it's still the same storyline. Bold and beautiful, yeah, days yeah, of our yeah, lives, yeah, yeah. <laughs> as example. That's not, that's, not, that's not our style. So we, we resolve But it's also, generations also very, very relevant yes. and tackles issues. Do you it's, think it, that's it, also part that's, of the that's, success? That's, that's also, yes, I'd say, I'd mm. say uh, you know, we, 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 we tend to focus also amongst, you know, in, on issues, what they call issues of national importance. Yeah. So like we've had AIDS storylines, we've had, you know, uh, the, the problem we have with uh, how women are treated in, in our society, yes. we've dealt homophobia, those kind of issues, but in an entertainment kind of way, yeah. because we are primarily an entertainment show. Absolutely. And uh, an uh, escapist, mm -hmm. you know, uh, show, yeah. uh, um, uh, upwardly mobile, perspective to it and uh, and I think that's really you know talk about timing I mean like for instance we came at a time where people uh, most dramas preceding us were written by Africana guys right know, right thinking like what Africans like and you know that's that sort of thing and we were one of the I was one of the pioneers actually of I came into the democratic transformation of that's my country right. yeah and then I wrote generations and people said yeah this is i guess people said yeah this is the kind of because it was stuff. aspirational yes, for the young black community yes, yes. And, and, and for the south first time and south africa was transforming that's right yes was transforming and people had expectations of their future themselves and their children so generations is not the only success story because you've worked on backstage for etv mm -hmm. been a landish you're involved on yes. with mnet so you've pretty much worked on all the channels so yes. really what is your thoughts on south african television and television shows as a whole the uh, quality of it really yeah you know i think um i think given what what we have in terms of resources and the talent levels I think we are doing pretty well, and um, we, we, we could be more innovative. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the, we have a, 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 a good pool of talent in South Africa, and I don't think the, the broadcast industry is exploiting that enough. And, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm generally, uh, I, I just feel that, you know, yeah, we could be more innovative, but um, on the whole, I'm happy with what we have so we've got the but talent we've, so got that's the ta we've got the talent but mm -hmm. but i wish uh, we could make it more of an industry in meaning that for instance i was having discussions yesterday with uh, people from the uh, department of trade and industry and i was saying like for instance like you know myself and my team we know how to produce soaps mm -hmm. i mean we've done benelanders uh generations backstage and uh, uh Josie H, Josie H, medical drama. So we have a certain skills level. Like, for instance, I do not understand, for example, why we do not have another generations in the marketplace. You As know, competition. Yes. Why, why we, don't, we do not have another generations? Why, for example, we have not made the business decision that we are going to be like Brazil? Like, you know, Brazil, you, you, I just came back from Ethiopia, you know, in, in, in January, this past January. I mean... All over Africa, you see these uh, Brazilian uh, telenovelas. You know, Brazil is flooding the world with telenovelas. So why can't we, as South Africa, make a decision that we're going to flood the continent of Africa with our soaps? We can, also, we can sell our soaps all over the world, just like Brazil does. I want to talk to you about the SABC, if we can go back there for uh -huh. just a second. And of course, we know the financial woes, yes. procurement, all mm -hmm. very well publicized. Yes. Your thoughts on being an executive producer of a soap uh, on the magnitude of, of, of generations and the, and the challenges faced to, to pay the bills when all these things are going on at the national broadcast. Yeah, yes. Um, it's quite a challenge, you know, but uh, we, 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 I mean, we've had to, <laughs> for instance, this week, this week, this past week, uh, we, we were not paid. Uh, uh, there was a challenge. Uh, um, so, uh, and then, uh, you know, we deliver the tapes mm. as we get paid. Yeah. So, uh, the SABC had enough tapes up to this past Tuesday. And we held the tapes for the continuation. Yeah. And our strategy has always been that 
you know, the payment must be reflected in our account. Otherwise, you're going to have a repeat on Wednesday. And that's going to upset advertisers mm -hmm. who have already paid for the time slot. You're going to upset viewers who expect something new mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. So we have the advantage of being a daily, so they're forced to pay us. You've got some leverage to mm -hmm. work with. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, though, uh, uh, that the, the, the implosion of the SABC has, lot, has led to uh, the destruction of a lot of uh, small emerging uh, production houses and uh, some bright people who were in our industry are no longer in our industry, lost forever perhaps. And uh, yeah, that's the tragedy that's, that has followed the implosion of our national broadcast. But what is the answer, Mfundi, if you were the head of the national broadcaster, what would you do to change things around? Well, first, first <laughs> you know, the SABC, again, it's, it's too big an institution. It's a, it's, 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 it's a bulky, too fat institution. Uh, the SABC can run effectively on a third of the, the human resources they have there now. Two-thirds two, two -thirds of the SABC is just fat, you know, and uh, so they must get rid of the two-thirds. Somebody must bite the bullet. You'll probably need a number of bodyguards, but two-thirds of the people of the SABC have got to go because they do not contribute any value to the SABC. They just sap, you know, the carcass of the SABC. So that's, that, that, that's the first thing. Further, the SABC, the, 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 uh, the SABC has to, um, uh, a decision has to be made to offload some of the uh, structures, some of the institutions of the SABC. For instance, they have to sell SABC 3, and they have to sell uh, uh, SABC 2, probably, and, uh, but SABC 3 must be sold. Why do you say that? Spun off. Uh, SABC 3 must be spun off and, and be sold to some black empowerment group to, to, uh, to, to increase the voice of uh, black people in the media. So it must be sold off to some entity so that it becomes a commercial uh, a, a broadcast institution. Mm. They probably have to sell 5FM, the other, other commercial radio stations, and the SABC must remain a public service broadcaster and must be run by somebody with a business sense, and, uh, but it, its remit is public broadcasting, education, health, and those sort of things. Mm -hmm. But the entertainment is left to, to, the, to, the, to, the, right. to the private sector. And I mean, we have some entertainment of the vernaculars, mm. yeah, yeah, that kind of thing in, in, in the public broad that's the public broadcasting service remit and those sort of things. But that's what it that's all it is, mm. you know. And the, and then and, and then, but that's my that's my that's your that's, that's my perspective. Yeah. Fundi, I'd like to go back um, just for a minute to back to generations and the management of talent because, as we know, these characters people fall in love with them. They mm -hmm. in your in your living room every night. Mm -hmm. um, you get to know them. What happens if one of your main characters? Let's look at a Connie Ferguson. Mm -hmm. That's that's left generation. She yeah. was one of your main characters um, that pursues other interests. What are the what do you do as an executive producer? Um, you know, in order to counteract that and still save the show. Well, you find somebody else. Hopefully, you find somebody else just as talented as uh, Connie Ferguson or somebody more talented than her. I mean, there's tons of talent here in South Africa. There's, I mean, there's lots of people, like, on my Facebook, like, on my Facebook, I get, I mean, people, like, just harassing me to get into Generations. Sure, I'm sure. I get, I get harassed, you know, like... You should have a bodyguard. So, sometimes on the streets and <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah, I get, you know, like, you know, there are a lot of people who, are, who want to get in, you know, like this... There's so much talent in South Africa, it's mind-boggling. So you just move on, is that what you're saying? No, no you, just, you just move on. Nobody's indispensable, including Fundi Bundla. You know, there's nobody indispensable. There's only somebody who's just in the wings, waiting to take your place. You make one false move, you're gone. You know, there's all this talent. Talent is, is, is you know, there's, there's lots of talent, which is a great thing for which our country. Which is a great thing. Yeah. We're going to leave it there for now.